I don't know about you, but one of my greatest fears as I get older is to have my brain not function appropriately. I imagine you don't sit around thinking about how amazing your mind is in a general sense, but it really is a remarkable tissue. Unfortunately, as we age, there is a high chance of mental decline unless you do certain things to keep it in tip-top shape. Fortunately, you probably already take this, but there's a supplement that is believed to help fight off cognitive decline. Any guesses on what it is? It's simple. You probably already use it, but there may be some things that you'll want to look out for that might make the difference between its effectiveness and ineffectiveness. So let's discuss this study that describes the impact multivitamins, that's right, multivitamins have on your cognition. This was done in older individuals in their late 60s and was a randomized controlled trial including men and women. These people did not have any signs of dementia and were randomized to either receive a multivitamin, I'll go into the more specifics on it in a bit, or a placebo, so a fake pill with no vitamins. Then over two years, the researchers performed a series of mental exams at the beginning and the end of the two years to compare the differences between the groups. Before we get to the results, I'd like to give you a mental test, if you'll allow. Let's stretch our critical thinking abilities here. If you've been with Physionic for some time, you'll know that the baseline or pre-study health differences should be non-existent because if one group, multivitamin group or the placebo group, has some baseline differences in health or circumstance, it can throw off the interpretation of the results. So. Let me show you the baseline data. It's a lot of numbers, but I'll orient you. We have the multivitamin group on the top left side and the placebo on the top right side. Then a bunch of compared characteristics on the left hand side. I'm not gonna bore you by going line by line. There were no differences as far as I could tell. By the way, the numbers in the parentheses are percentages. Okay, here is the question that I have for you. Unlike a study looking at something like blood pressure or blood sugar, what unlikely category makes a big difference in this study? Think about it. Post your thoughts. Remember, unlike a study looking at blood pressure and blood sugar. So no, it isn't the obvious answer of nutrition. You ready? The answer is education. Keep in mind, the outcome that we're looking at, cognition. This is heavily influenced by a person's education because more time in school might, keyword, might, indicate more time forced to think and problem solve, even after schooling is over, which has an inverse relationship with cognitive decline, meaning the more that you use your brain for complex thinking, the better, generally. I wanted to point this out because this is the kind of thing that you have to consider when analyzing studies. They make a massive difference in our interpretation. If you got it right, nice work. And yes, one could make an argument for a few other measurements. It isn't, you know, black and white. Okay, so what happened to these people when they consumed a multivitamin for two years? And why did other studies show different results? Here's the data. We have two cognition metrics, global cognition, which is a composite of several neuropsychological tests and episodic memory, which is a memory of past events. To be fair, there are technically are more cognitive tests in general, but they limited the analysis to these two. Then we see a line down the middle moving vertically. That's the uh, no difference line. Meaning if the diamonds and squares sit on that line, there is no difference between placebo and multivitamin use. Then on the left side, we see a number of Cosmos studies. With a sharp eye, you might notice that they've added whole new study groups, not just the Cosmos clinic, which is what we started out with at the beginning of the video. 
My guess is because the results indicated an uncertain effect, but likely not because there's no actual effect, but because they didn't have enough data to indicate an effect. This is perfectly fine to do. It's like adding more pixels on a screen so that you can make out the subject. Okay, so the black boxes indicate the effect. If they move to the right, it means that there's likely positive cognitive effect of multivitamin use. And if they move to the left, it indicates worse cognitive performance with multivitamins. Then, because we have multiple non-overlapping studies, the average effect of all the studies combined is the black diamond. I'll cut to the chase, and as I'm sure you already saw yourself, there is an effect of multivitamin use in improving cognition for both metrics, global cognition and episodic memory. The statistics at a p-value of 0.009 and 0007 are well below the significance cutoff of 0.025 laid out by the researchers. However, in my opinion, they used the wrong statistical test. They used what's known as a random effects model, which is usually used when there's high heterogeneity or difference between the studies. I think that they should have used a fixed effects model. In the end, it doesn't actually change the conclusion. The results would have still been the same, but I thought I'd point it out in case you're one of the people who's taken my course on how to analyze studies like I do. I lay it all out in there. At any rate, this is good news for multivitamin use, but there's several studies that indicate no effect. So why should we believe these results and not the dissenting studies? Well, multiple reasons. One, the researchers correctly point out that many studies have used single vitamins or minerals, which is quite different from dosing all necessary vitamins and minerals at once in a multivitamin. That's why they call it multivitamin. Fun fact that you 100% already knew. Knowledge. You're welcome. Additionally, other multivitamin studies have used different formulations of multivitamins, missing two ingredients that the researchers hypothesize might be important. Before I get to those two ingredients, I'll be covering the difference in effect in people with depression, cardiovascular disease, and many other details in the full version of this video, which can be found in the Physionic Insiders. If you're interested in getting access to all my work, even beyond this video, the link is in the description. I'd really love to have you join. Now, the two ingredients the researchers point out that might be of importance are lutein and lycopene which are not shared in all the multivitamins, but was included in this formulation. I should also note that this study was partly funded by the company that makes the multivitamin used. And as I've stated many times before, that doesn't automatically disqualify the study in my eyes, but for some, it's ground for dismissal. In the end, if you are in your 60s and beyond, this study suggests a multivitamin per day will help maintain your cognitive ability, and that's at a pretty low cost, low effort bargain. However, there are other low cost, low effort cognitive boosters, which you can also find linked to this content here. Thanks for watching.